Hello, you're welcome to Online Healing Crusade. I'm so delighted to welcome you. Uh, we believe if you have been joining us for some time, God has been blessing you through this program. And if this is your first time, uh, then you're welcome. Welcome to the table of the Lord. The table of the Lord, where there is the word of the Lord, the power of God that solves every problem that you can ever encounter here on earth. Hallelujah, we bless God. God told his servants to preach the gospel, the word of healing. Take the healing power of God to this generation. And he's been doing that for quite some time. And here we come with online healing could say that God instructed me almost two years ago. I believe you are going to be blessed greatly. Join me to welcome the servants of the Lord Evangelist Louis Mufemi Mundari as he brings the word of the Lord again to us tonight. And don't forget every day, 6 p.m. GMT plus one. We're here with you. The Lord is said to bless you so tomorrow you can come and again tomorrow and again invite people. If you have anybody that has any challenge, any health challenge, physical challenge, physical health challenge, spiritual challenge, you bring them online. The power of God is available. God is still doing great things. Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. The virtue from him dissolves every issue and he has the answer and solution to every challenge and problem of life. God bless you. Stay connected. Praise the Lord. Thank God for the opportunity to bring you the word of life, you know. Anytime we come to minister to you, it's an opportunity to bring you the word of God in massive form. So we thank God for that, okay? Now let's get on board today and get the work done. Acts chapter 3 and Acts chapter 5, I just want to summarize some stuff, okay? Chapter 3 talks about um, Peter ministering to a person that has been lame for some time. Let me read that for us. Acts chapter 3 from verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who sent Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with joy, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. And then Peter said, Silver and gold have I known, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Wow. And they that knew that it was he which sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, wondering. Praise God. Now, that, that was what Jesus Christ did through um, Peter. And then let's go to chapter 4 quickly, from verse 1. And as they spake unto the people, the priest and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day, for it was now even tired. How did many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of them, of the men, was about 5,000. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and the elders and the scribes and Ananias, the high priest and Caiaphas, and John and Alexander, and all as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost said unto them, You rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined on the good deeds done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus, the Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you guys crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him, both this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught, of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, 
For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Wow. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And um, beholding the man which was healed standing with them right there, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to this man? For that indeed a notable miracle had been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether I be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than to hearken unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding not in how they might punish them because of the people. For all men do glorify God for that which was done. For the man who the man was a, above 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was shown. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the sheep priests and the elders have done. Praise God. Now, I, I just summarize, you know, there is something interesting that I want to bring to you. That is, the power of God is able to do as he has done in the days of old in the Bible. You know, he did those things through Jesus personally through Jesus. Peter, James, and John, and the rest of the apostles were only watching to see what Jesus was doing. They couldn't participate, as in they cannot say they to pray for somebody and something happened. But there was a time that Jesus was there and he sent them out two by two. If you look at Luke chapter 10, you see that. He sent them out two by two and they went out. And they came back to come and give report. Wow! Spirit are subject to us when we mention your name. Demons are just running away when we mention your name. There is something about this, your name, Master. Ah, we have learned this secret today that when we use your name, something will happen. Hey, this is your name is a powerful name. Oh, you know that kind of a thing. Now, and uh, they still kept quiet. It will be Jesus who keep ministering all around, but they have tasted of his power at that time. Then, after Jesus Christ died, I mean, before Joseph died, he told them, you don't go out preaching like I used to do and the way I sent you the last time. Uh, last, last time, you were using my own anointing, you know. I saw Satan fall down like lightning. You saw demons flying out when you cast them out. But then, the whole combination is because I'm still here with you. Now, I have to go. So if I have to go, then God has to come and give you your own dose of this Holy Ghost power. You must have that power yourself. Not the one I have and I, you know, impart unto you. You wait on, at the upper room until you are endued with power from my heart. And they waited. I get what I'm saying. And then, after his ascension, and then they waited and they received. In Acts chapter 2, they received Holy Ghost power. That looked like cloven tongues of fire come upon their head. I get what I'm saying. So, after that, they have not really practiced what they have received. Until Acts chapter 3, when Peter now said... This power will receive is not just for speaking in tongues, blah 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 blah. Not that there is something more than speaking in tongues, that is speaking with authority, that is speaking with power, that is speaking that is back up with miracle signs and wonders following. That's what he promised us when he was going. So they have not really practiced it to that level. But now the opportunity showed up when they were trying to go to the house of prayer. That is normal time of prayer, you know. The Jews pray maybe five times a day or something. And uh, one of those hours of prayer, they were going to the church or the synagogue to pray. And then somebody now asked for alms. Whosoever God bless among you, please bless me with some money so I can feed myself. Please, I pray God bless you, bless me with some money I can feed myself. That's the way they were just talking, you know. And uh, whosoever has some coins, we drop it for them. And then that will be enough for them to feed for the day. They will come another time. But they asked that as Peter was going. Now, on a good day, this thing would not have meant anything to Peter. The only thing he would have done was that if he had money, let him drop the money and just go away. No trouble. But because he has just been anointed, and they have not practiced the anointing. Hey, so this is practical now. 
let's try that thing that Jesus Christ gave us at the upper room where we receive Holy Ghost power with evidence of speaking in tongues. Let's add to the evidence of speaking in tongues another evidence of healing the sick. Kola Biakatas. Mm. So, they now went back and said, you were asking something the other time. You said you need some money, right? As for silver and gold, we don't have. But we have something. No? Ah, we have received something. We are not empty. We have something. Our pocket may not be full with uh, money, but inside our spirit, there's a rocket full with power. And uh, so, let's have something done here. We want to pray for you that you may receive your ability to walk again. You know, you, we heard that you have never walked, right? But now you will walk today where we pray for you, okay? So look on us. We want to pray. And... He just said, he commanded. He didn't say in Jesus' name, Father, God, heaven, amen, angel. Mm -mm. He just said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. That's a command. That's not a prayer. He's not asking from God. He's not trying to. Mm -mm. He just commanded. He demanded something to happen. And after that prayer, for you to know that it is not Peter, fisherman talking. It is Peter, the anointed one. Hey, as he said in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The man was still looking at him like look man. He just grabbed his hand. I say, get up. And power flow <laughs> from that contact from his hand to the hand of the man. Then to the body of the man. Then to the bones of the man. Then to the knees of the man. Then to all the leg of the man. And the man stood up. The leg that has been stiff and hard that couldn't move, that make him to be crawling and begging. The thing straighten out. Kobe Nakia Satora. Are you getting what I'm saying? And everybody saw it. And this is a man we have known for 40 years, always sitting down here. Hey! The man is now walking. What happened? That man just prayed in Jesus' name. Hey! Which Jesus? The one you guys killed a few days ago. Hey! So that name is the one healing now. Yes, not to know what the Bible said that the stone that the builders have rejected has become the chief cornerstone. The name has become the chief cornerstone all across the world. People can use the name now to pray for people to be healed, to be delivered of whatever sickness, disease, and infirmity they make. Hey. So they arrested them for doing that. They said they are causing, they are disturbing the peace of the society. Then the next day they gather now to now come and see how they are going to handle their case. That's when they said, We are only one of you. Never again will you preach in that name again. Do you understand? Stop preaching in that name. You can preach in any other thing. Stop mentioning this name of Jesus. I'm making everybody feel as if we are the one that killed the person we are not supposed to kill. Ah, we want you. And he answered them. How will I stop preaching in the name of Jesus? When God said that's the name we should use when we preach, it is at his name that every name we bow. So how can we stop preaching in his name? Should we obey you now or obey God? God told us to go and preach in that name so we can't stop that. Are you getting what I'm saying? So they consulted with themselves again. They said, we have to release these people. Because people are still outside. Who knows the way miracle happened to that man? It's a notable miracle. We can't say, 40 year old man. We can't say it's fake. Okay? So, after that, they received more grace to be able to preach more. But since that day up to now, whenever we pray in the name of Jesus, the miracle that Jesus will have done if we are here physically, the miracle will be done. At his name. That's what I want to do with you today. I've been giving you different kind of testimonies on this platform. That whenever we pray in the name of Jesus, some strange things happen. I prayed in that name, the blind have seen. Totally blind on two eyes. I prayed with that name, totally deaf on the two ears have been healed. I prayed with that name, somebody whose leg is stiff and couldn't walk. Are you getting He carries his leg. Use one hand to carry the leg. Use, hand, use one hand to carry. That's the way he's moving. It's not. So, and he got healed. The leg that was hanging dropped down. And then he walked normally. Somebody walking with stick because of, uh, um, what do you call it? Um, maybe arthritis and elderly woman. Okay? Got healed. So, I've seen things happen when we pray in that name. Dead has come back to life when I pray in that name. So how will I say I won't pray in that name or I'm afraid to pray for you in that name? Five brothers disappeared with that name. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is something about this name. It's not an ordinary name. 
And you get to, when we mention that name, it's like God just showed up in the atmosphere on the scene to get something done that no man would have been able to do by himself. So that's the kind of miracle you are going to receive today. So I don't know where you hurt. I don't know where you have problems. I don't know where you have issues. I don't know where you want God to intervene in your life. Wherever that is, lay your hand on the place now. If it's your eyes, lay your hand on the eyes. If it's your ears, lay your hand on the ears. If it's your mouth, couldn't talk well, raise, lay your hand there. If you say heart, please place your hand there. If it's any part of the organs of your body, just place your hand around that place. I'm looking for a point of contact, something to connect the power to where you want the power to work. Are you getting what I'm saying? And if it's somebody by your side who is incapacitated, can't raise up hand, can't raise up leg, can't even place hand in anywhere, you that you are close to him, place your hand there. The miracle will still happen. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, and let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, everyone here in the sound of my voice today that need a miracle from God. Now, I'm praying in the name of Jesus. First, I rebuke the spirit of sickness, the spirit of disease, the spirit of infirmity, the spirit of death. I cast you out in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are holding the life of these people as prisoner, and you don't want to release them, because the Bible says the devil does not want to release his prisoners once he has, you know, imprisoned them. But today, because I have authority from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says that this is the reason why the Son of God is manifested, to undo the works of the devil. You have tied them. You will lose them now. You must lose them. They are loose now in the name of Jesus. You have bound them, but you release the bound now. I command that bondage to be released in the name of Jesus. You have oppressed them. I rebuke that spirit of oppression in the name of Jesus. You are making them getting so much obsessed with evil that they are doing negative things with, as if their mind is what I bind that spirit of obsession in the name of Jesus. And whosoever is having so much of the devil that he has become possessed with the devil, whether he's totally mad or he has gone out of his mind, I bind that spirit of possession and I command that spirit to get out of the body in the name of Jesus. Be loosed from your infirmity, be loosed from your sicknesses, and be released from the zone of death back to the zone of life. You're not dying anymore. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Not only that, any area the devil has damaged any organ of your body, I command the area that are damaged to be restored, restored, restored afresh, anew, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. All right, you desire a baby, you have your baby right now. In the name of Jesus, go prepare to what you are going to use to take care of the baby. You have that baby right now. In the name of Jesus. You've lost a child before, and since that time, you've not been able to get another one because the surgery that led to, the, to that has damaged your system. Now you are restored in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Any organ that has been damaged, that organ is restored now. In the name of Jesus. Where the devil said there's no way for you. There is a way. Not even for one child. For triplets. In the name of Jesus. Triple. Triplet. In the name of Jesus. Triple for your trouble. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Glory and honor to your name, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, that's how much we're able to take today. But um, i like to invite you for the program that is coming. The online i mean um akure 60 days healing crusade akure 60 days healing crusade uh it's coming off from 1st of april to 30th of may and today is 25 oh boy <laughs> we are very close to it now are you getting what i'm saying 5 p.m daily venue is going to be at the most high god side that's where we meet here for ejibo street futa south gate at patapiti akure ondo state nigeria and um, I will not be the only world ministering. Two great men of God are going to be joining us for this program. Reverend Dr. John O. Ido from Adoik, the AKT State, is going to come all the way from another state to this place because of this program. And uh, that's the general overseer of um, uh, the name of Jesus' ministry, uh, Jesus Cathedral in Adoik. He will be here with us. He's a mighty man of God with so much of great power of God demonstration when he ministers. And people enjoying him not only in Adoikiti but across Nigeria because he ministers on radio, on television, and on cable network that cut across nations of the world. Uh, my father, the Lord Reverend Olushola Ayodele Areogun, that's the founder and president of uh, uh, the Living Jesus Ministry, uh, Life Forces International Church, and the Dream Center worldwide. 
St. David Center family. Now, he's going to be with us on this program. And you know, the mighty man of God that God has been using over the years with awesome anointing. Not just a teacher that teaches principles alone, but a teacher with awesome power of God for healing, signs, and wonders. Oh, the place is going to be loaded. And you get what I'm saying? And whenever he comes, you know, he comes with money. <laughs> so it's going to be heavy dose. <laughs> ah, the apostolic and the prophetic jam together. <laughs> Such a great move of God. Akura is going to enjoy a serious move of God within this period. And uh, when you hear that God wants to do a program for 60 days on the same spot, you can know there's going to be concentration of heaven on that spot for that period of time. I want you to make sure that you bring anybody that is sick in their body. They are afflicted. The poor, the people that need the gospel being preached to them, the people that if this opportunity did not come, they might die in their houses because of sickness and disease. The people that they are having life-threatening sicknesses and they don't have money to take care of themselves. Those are the people that this kind of program is meant for. A lot of people are rich and they don't really care whether there's any 60 days program. They have enough money to travel outside the country for help. You no, know, better, better health. But now, God is making this available for anybody. You, know, you, you don't have to be rich to come, whether you are rich or you are poor, you are middle class, whatever class, just come. The anointing for healing is looking for who is sick to heal. So the more sick people we have on ground, the more the power of God will move. So bring them in mass, and we're going to see God manifest his power in mass, all right? So uh, not only that, this program is not only going to be on that side for that 60 days, Within that 60 days, if you log on to this same channel you are watching through now, that is um, either YouTube or Facebook or our website, which is uh, www.c2fm.org, or Facebook, that's Clothing Tongues of Fire Ministry on the Facebook, or you check on the, the, the YouTube, CTOFM TV. There will be space between C2FM and TV, and then you just put enter. The thing will search it out for you. You see a lot. And then you see the live streaming going on every day. But that, the difference is that this one will only rush it out for 15 to 20 or 30 minutes at the most. But that one, since once the program starts, oh boy, it's going to be at least one hour nonstop. It could be more because there's going to be you know, preaching, also ministration of power to get people healed, and then testimonies after the healing. Those are the kind of things we expect for 60 days. So I will expect to see you there. Don't only hear this, tell somebody about it. And also, if you see our uh, advertisement on the Facebook, pick it and also reshare it again. Let the thing keep spreading so that as many people as possible can come from anywhere. Okay, vehicles are going to be available in Akura industry to be able to convey people to the venue. Uh, so wherever you are coming from, you are welcome. Well, until tomorrow, be healthy, wealthy, and strong. God bless you.